Now we're gonna review some basic stuff about EQing and special effects that you can do to really just elevate your mix and manipulate the music a bit more. So we went over this earlier, but each mixer has each channel. And on each channel, we have always, no matter what kind of mixer you're on, there's gonna be some EQ knobs. So we always have our high, our mid, and our low for EQ. Now EQ is basically gonna control what frequencies we hear in each song that is playing. So the lows are going to be your bass drum, things you hear lower in your hips, lower in your body, kick drums, bass drum, bass lines, bass synths, anything that's just like a heavier vibration, you, you feel it deeper. And it's usually what you're kind of like dancing to and what's moving your body. The mids are gonna mostly control vocals, guitars, pianos, things that are like the main melodic bits of a song. And then your highs are gonna control the more higher frequency things. Things like claps, snaps, um, anything that you hear kind of up here. If you ever forget, it's like I've said so many times, things are really about your body. You can hear these sounds in your body and the way you feel them. So the highs, you will feel them up here a bit more. So when we're mixing, the way that EQing comes into play is we have two songs. Each song has a whole spectrum of sounds, and those sounds fill up the lows and the mids and the highs of what we hear. So if we have two songs that both have this full sound going on, it's a lot of information for our ears to process, and it's just a lot of frequencies flying around, and it can sound muddy, it can just sound intense, and then you're also kind of like washing out certain sounds and songs that maybe you want to highlight a bit. So using EQing, we can eliminate or boost or lower the different frequencies of each song as we're transitioning. So that way, maybe I want to pull the bass out of one song so that the bass of my new song can shine through a bit. And that gives me a nice, interesting mix or a cleaner mix. You can get creative with it but it's really, really nice to utilize when mixing any song. So I'm gonna play a song real quick and I'm going to go through the highs, mids, and lows by boosting them all the way and then cutting them so that you can hear the difference of what happens with each EQ knob. So there you can see it makes a really big difference to use EQ knobs at all for any song. And if it helps to think of each song as a, a grid that has all this space taken up like a map and we're just kind of subtracting from here on one song and adding from here on another song just to fill that space that our ears can pick up. Most mixers and DJ softwares will also have an option for high and low pass filters. These are the most common to use and they're really helpful when you're mixing in general whether you want to have a cleaner mix, whether you want to do something that just sounds a little different, we have a high pass and a low pass filter. Now this one is really conveniently placed on each channel of this Pioneer mixer. Sometimes it'll be in a separate area where you have to direct it to the channel, but for the most part, you can find it somewhere on a mixer. So basically what it's going to do is the high pass is going to sweep away all of the sounds that are not in the high frequency range, and the low pass is going to sweep away everything that's not in the low range. So it's kind of like doing the EQ, but like a bit more simplified and on a more dramatic scale. So there you can see by using the high and low pass knob, you can really get some fun and dramatic kind of effects or use it to mix and sweep in and out of sounds a bit more fun and cleaner. 
So some other really common effects to use when you're DJing are echoes and reverbs. So those do a few different things. We all kind of know what an echo does. It just takes a tiny chunk of a song or a sound and it repeats it. And as it repeats, it's just kind of drifting off. So a reverb basically mimics the sound of space. So sometimes when we're mixing in something, we want to just have this like loud kind of swell or like this openness that sounds like a sound is being heard in the middle of a hall. So it's not quite an echo where there's a repeating of a certain sound, but it's just this like big open space that happens around that sound. So this comes in really handy because sometimes you want to add a little something more to a mix as you're pulling out of a song or give a fun effect in the middle of a song playing, but also it's really helpful when you're kind of in a tight spot and you need to mix out of a song or quickly drop into something and you maybe like the song's ending and you don't have enough time to mix it because you were too busy paying attention to something else or jumping on a table, whatever you were doing. It's really a nice like plan B to make it seem like you were supposed to do that and things were meant to be that way. So what I like to do is crank up the echo and pull out of a sound and slowly fade out or do the same with a reverb. So what's really cool about this mixer is actually these filter knobs on each channel. They have a nice little mini effect hub over here that you can assign to each of these knobs. There's also this whole effect section over here that you can get really specific about what type of echo you get or how many beats the echo goes on for or what chunk of the song it takes. Like you can get really specific in there. Also taking the frequencies, like you can really go to town over here, but just for the sake of simplifying it, we're gonna stick with our really basic effects here and we're gonna do an echo. So what's really cool with the echo is even if you pull out of the sound, you pull the volume away from the track you're playing, the echo still goes on for you. So say you were cutting out of a track or mixing out and you just wanted to kind of have a smoothing over effect to your mix out, having a little echo on the end there makes it so that it's not a sharp cut from song A to song B. It's just got this little like trail sprinkling behind. And now we're gonna do the same with reverb. So it's really cool as we have the option here to get a high frequency reverb or a low frequency, same with the echo, same with all the filters, we can crank it up and really highlight those higher or lower frequencies while we get that effect, which is really fun. So now I'm going to do an example of mixing two songs using my EQ and I'm going to use some echo for now just to switch out and you can hear the difference it makes versus doing a really clean sharp cut. So now I'm going to do the same thing using some EQ and a bit of reverb. Thank you. 
So we went over basic EQing, which really helps you get a nice clean mix. But we also went over some basic effects, things you can practice and really customize to make each mix your own and come up with your own style to transition between songs. <laughs>